All right, all right, ladies, gentlemen, citizens of the Empire, how you doing? Merry Christmas Eve or Happy Christmas Eve? How do you do Christmas Eve? I don't know. All I know is I may or may not be streaming tomorrow, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> how you doing? We're back with uh with uh, the Outer Worlds. I need to fix some of my stuff. Okay, we'll uh, upgrade some stealth things since it's being all mad at me. Um, what else do we want to do? Defense, I guess, is good. Okay. Vicar Max has some stuff he needs to do. Oh, also he needs armor. Mm, I guess that'll work. Definitely need extra on that. What does he use? He bludgeons people to death with that? Uh, that's actually worse. That's way worse. All right, cool. All right, so what is this? The unreliable. Oh, we do need to talk to Ludwig before we go, I think. He is also this way. Alright, Psycho. I have got your uh, logic module, I think, or motherboard or some such. When I was little, we'd get freighters in every Sunday noon. Now they only come but once a month. Oof. I love Never seen the veil lit up like this before. That's good. Uh, here's the logic Bang module. Up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, well, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. Yeah. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble. And a little something to remember me by. Alright, goodbye. Thank you, you absolute nutcase. I need a laser rifle or something. Where is the unreliable? It's around. Probably on the other side of the door of uh, town. Faux windows. Why would you order fake windows? <laughs> it's real fake doors all over again. <laughs> all right, back to the ship or to the ship finally. And it's just uh. Oh, it's telling us to. No, we're gonna go out the front gate, I think. Which is this way, I believe? I think something outside the walls. I don't know how close we are, but I, I'm pretty sure that's closer. <clears throat> there we go. Three hundred meters to the north. Doesn't actually look too different. There's the ship. Because it didn't take care of you before. Be I have your back, Captain. <laughs> We're pretty good at this. Come. <laughs> Is everyone all right? Wait, where is... Okay. Oh my god, I disintegrated him. What you got, resident? 
Oh my god, is that Thomas? Okay, perhaps not. Time to finally get off this planet. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but... Every time I think of going back, I get this... Sinking feeling. It's fine. I understand. The babbling's also adorable. Um... Can't understand... I can understand why you're not wanting to go back. You didn't seem happy there. You've never been on a ship before. Those people in Edgewater need you. Oh, well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? I think yes, because I have two companions. Uh, are you sure Reed wouldn't mind you leaving me uh, with me? You just met me, not interested. No, uh. I know, I know. Mr. Thompson said I was to chaperone you about the veil. Loan me out to you like I was Spacer's choice property. Well, they may think I am, but I'm not. Yeah, Mr. Thompson's got a temper. But I'm more scared of missing out than I am of him. I don't want to lose my one chance at seeing the stars. All right, let's do it. Yes. I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Yep. Ah! I got a captain. Oh my God, that's so cute. And fuck that corporate goon. So let's just go. I expected a uh, transition there. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. Well, I kind of had what to. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. All right. <laughs> He's just standing right there. Like, do, do you need to talk? Oh no, they're both uh, following me. So they're they're not in we are home mode yet. That hurt. What can I do for you, Captain? Let's get the hell out of here. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Against all odds. <laughs> we have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Put him through. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. 
Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. What do you mean, drippage? <laughs> uh... Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Okay. Uh, fine, I'll have a word with Gladys. Why do you need a nav key? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. That makes sense. Uh, right, the Black Marketeer. What's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Uh, can't I land somewhere outside Stellar Bay? In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. All right, well, let's, uh, we'll talk Excellent. to you. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Okay, well, uh, thanks. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Okay, uh, you mentioned limitations. People actually fall for this? Seems far-fetched. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Okay. Wait, uh... Why don't... Uh, why do I need the gadget? I can just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes! What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Okay. Wait, how does it sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. Science, just general science, okay. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. Mm-hmm. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. 
The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Okay, got it. Let's go up to the captain's quarters first. Oh my god. When did I steal this sign? Okay. Messages. Alright, whatever. Chessboard. Empty. Make yourself at home, Captain. Oh, I intend to. Oh, this is sweet. All right, independent orbital station. Uh, remains of Halcyon's first colony ship, captained by Ju Jun Lee Tennyson. We've arrived at the groundbreaker. Okay, we'll disembark in a moment. I want to talk to the crew Can first. Oh. oh shit, you're right there. Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? Uh, what about her? Can't be that good. I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Uh, sure, if we can find the place. Uh, I thought you said you could keep, uh... This boat in good repair. Are you asking to leave my crew and join hers? Gosh, no, Captain. I am to stay so long as I'm welcome. I figured June Lay and I could confabulate over wireless or by message. Right, and okay. maybe when we put into Groundbreaker, I could stop by to visit her sometimes. But only when you don't need me with you. Sweet. Uh. I ab so surely can. I'm a passing fair mechanic. Even Mr. Thompson would have said it's my only skill. But I'm used to working on cannery lines, AG loaders, and the like. There's tricks about ships I ain't learned yet. All I'm looking for is a few pointers. I bet a lady who runs a whole station has forgot more than I ever learned. All right, well, we'll do that if we can Thanks, find Captain. engineering. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Nope, you, you sort of approached me. Uh... No, I'm not going to ask her to leave. Hello. Leave the auto mechanical alone. <laughs> hmm. This is not a petunia. Okay. <laughs> what is that? Light ammo? I'm not gonna take her shit. So, okay. How you doing, Max? Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Uh... I'd like to know something about those I'm flattened with. What's your story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Yup, definitely that. <laughs> uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. Uh... Why were you so passionate about it? Were they not religious? On the contrary. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, 
Find out why I lacked it. And? They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. Right, you did it for answers, but what is the plan here? The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. Right. Uh, if you can't help but follow the plan, then is everything... You do part of it, right? Uh, that's a convenient way to control the masses. <laughs> Very true. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Right, well that's very convenient. Uh, seems trusting of you just to sign on without knowing anything about me. The book, and yeah, we'll talk about the book later. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. Makes sense. Uh, that seems extreme. If the book doesn't have the answers you're looking for. I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? What's your story? I was a colonist on the Hope Ship, thrill seeker and lover of great renown. I love a good adventure story. And how did he do that? He kidnapped me. <laughs> Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Uh, I had family on the hope, my friends are on the hope. Uh, just because it's the right thing to do. Oh, I see. You have my condolences. Okay, on to the groundbreaker we go. Well, let's look around first. Just a bunch of food in the mess hall, obviously. Lovely. What's in here? A single toilet and sink for the whole ship. Lovely. I hope to never return to the time where I have one bathroom to use with several people. It is the worst thing ever. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. Yep, those, those are the only two companions I have. Just checking your ship's manifest. Standard procedure. Welcome to Groundbreaker, by the by. Don't mind the heat. Got a few days before it reaches critical. I'm sure Miss Chief Tennyson will get it sorted before then. Okay, well, we need to not Smells tarry. Like grease and unwashed bodies, just as I remembered. Been here before, Max? That's not the point. This hack would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get you with me again, you little back bay brat. I will toss you out an airlock. Hello. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. 
I don't have time for this. You drink. What's up, buddy? Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. Right, uh, I'd like to hear you said what happened. Heard you knocked somebody out with a toss ball stick. Uh, it's almost like you wanted to get arrested, kinda. Yeah, because I knocked my foreman out with a toss ball stick. But, to be fair, I wasn't the one who started it. The guy was insulting my Rizzo's Rangers. You what? Look, if it's a crime to defend your favorite toss ball team against slander and calumny, well then lock me right up. That's not worth getting arrested over, fuck that. Okay, slow down, what exactly uh, did you do? Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. So you defend the honor of your team, and that's when you resolve differences like an adult, right? That's when I broadsided him with a toss ball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman, and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. I see. You're just lucky you're not serving a sentence, yeah. Got Enjoy plan. my freedom. Scrounged together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? It is. Technically, the previous captain died in a horrible accident. Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. I uh, never caught your name. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, Felix. See you around, boss. Let's go buy some illegal uh, passes, shall we? Customs and inspection, right this way. Hello? Identification, please. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. Why is that? According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. Or you could but fuck we've off. we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. Uh, how do I get this resolved? So I'm stuck here. I'll take it back. I'm not Alex Hawthorne, and that is in my ship. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Just the opposite. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations here. Surely this must be some sort of mix-up. They must have a real big bee in their bonnets, then. Everyone knows you don't trifle with Groundbreaker if you want to get your goods on time. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. Uh, this has to be a mistake. Great, I'll talk to him and straighten it out. <sighs> I'm going to wring Bedford guy's neck. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Sure, what? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. All right. A handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Understood. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? Open the door. Uh, can I find a job around here? The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. 
Okay. I love food. Uh, looking for a drink, recommendations, find a job. You noticed, huh? I'm sharp like that. What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. Okay, yet your station is in a state of disrepair. Uh, you could make the board fix it. Why can't the ground breaker and the board just work together? Eh, fuck the board. I'm glad it terrifies them. The bastards keep pushing them. You mean the heat? Sure, we could make them fix it. But what would they do in retaliation? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? Yeah, they would. The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Okay. Well, well. Be seeing you. What is this? I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. Oh, oh. I'm in the wrong place. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your break. Captain, could I have a moment of your time? Can I help you? Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. Okay. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Right, uh, that sounds like a good lead, but how do we find him? Seems like a bit of a long shot. Seriously, the only, <laughs> only one guy in this whole colony can translate French? The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. Uh, hey, I'm your captain here. I'm the only one who gets to be a smartass. A thousand pardons, my good captain. I thought we were engaging in witty repartee. Now, as far as tracking down this scholar, fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Okay. How will the crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? How does a simple victor ha happen to be such a skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock right I meditated led sermons provided guidance to the inmates as needed of course I also played prison yard toss ball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems okay uh, how will the crew manifest help you track down your scholar friend I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophists off-world destination thank you captain Okay. We'll see if we can find him. Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types wow. about. Oh, what is that? Put him Bedford. Uh, oh, she's in here. Ooh, can we rent an upstairs room? I don't think we're going to be renting a room. Hello. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. 
You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient or an oven. Just like store-bought. Okay, uh, well, Phineas sent me. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Right, definitely. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Okay. Yeah, I definitely don't have that. Tell me about the opportunity. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Shit, okay, never Lots. mind. Maybe I should charge you double. No, 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 no. That's not a... Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... No qualms, let's hear it. Do you know Edna over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Say no more, I'm in. Why was it abandoned? Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. Right, uh... Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So, like as not, someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, I'd wager they got something to hide. Uh, if it's a corporate town, something to hide. Oh, with something to hide, why the SOS? Sounds like an opportunity, all right. Uh, if they're hiding something, won't they be liable to shoot it on sight? Quite the opposite, I believe. Nothing terribly secret about gunfire, is there? If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Makes sense. Uh, so you need someone to snoop. My services don't come cheap. I can see where this is going. Count me out. Neither do mine, dearie. Old Gladys knows the value of good work. You'll be compensated accordingly, I can promise you that. Okay. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well, then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. Count me in. Law bless your atoms. Here's a copy of the SOS recording complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Okay. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Thanks. All I need to do is get my ship unlocked. Hello. I'm sorry about the heat. Chief Tennyson will get the radiators fixed soon. Of course, this heat sure makes a zero G brew extra refreshing. It's an ale that's good for what ails you. Oh, and it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. 
Right, definitely. A lot of slogans to keep track of. And sometimes I forget. Uh, you work for Space Destroyers? Ever been to Edgewater? I've got to ask you about that. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our consumer care headwear division. Um, you doing all right in there? Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. Right. Uh, can you see in there? Where can I get a hat like yours? Enough talk. Let's see what you're selling. You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. <laughs> I mean, why anyone can be a spacer's choice consumer relations choice specialist. <laughs> Just keep your nose clean and aim for the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you would never ask if you knew what it's uh, I can like see all of our top quality merchandise in the Spacer's Choice catalog, which is available here at a reasonable price. How do you brush your teeth? Spacer's Choice regrets we're just harassing that we don't this sell man. toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat wash, mouth wash, and manta floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Isn't Sprat a creature? How are you... What are you washing it with? Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all a Groundbreaker. Or anywhere in the Halcyon Colony. Okay. Do you have to sleep with that thing on? Are we just gonna keep... Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse Mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig of two-hour energy brew. That does not... The blast will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold guaranteed. Okay, never mind. Does Spacer Choice make you wear all that? Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares. Our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school, only to make him wear this hat. Do you need me to help you get you out of there? Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. <laughs> now. Are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is Spearmint. I am addressing the man beneath the mask. Are you okay? I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job, it may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but... They're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. My god. Sorry if I pushed you hard, Martin. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you God in some damn it, quality man. budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we do corners so you don't have to. Let's just, uh... Did I ask him that already? Uh, have a look. What do you even sell? Oh my, okay. Weapons and ammo. And... No, he has like a little bit of everything. Hmm. 17, how much does this cost? Oh my god, what? No, back. Uh, oh, 340? And we have 6,000, so I guess that uh, doesn't really matter.
<clears throat> uh, let's actually go to weapons. Okay, goodbye. Pleasure doing business with you. Are you listening to me, Emperor? Who it? You can't get me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? A little bit. See, Emperor? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Uh, maybe I can look into her? Oh, uh, wait. You don't even like her, but you're checking on her? You say that like it's weird. It is. It's none of my business. I was just curious, but why bother? That's very noble of you. Like I said, Jesse did me a favor, and now I owe her one. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Understood. Uh, maybe I can look in on her? Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Uh, quest objectives require you to restricted area. If caught, you will be shot on sight. Use disguise. Okay. What seems to be the problem? If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Miss Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. Okay. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records. If that's what you're implying. Not without dispensation from Chief June Lei, I fear. Supplies are hard to come by out here. Okay, uh, how do you mean? Well, it means exactly Take what care. you said. Supplies are hard to come by. So I need to find a, uh... Nobody cares that I'm back here? Oh, I need to talk to you. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Oh, uh, Willers told me to get, uh, to get you off his ass about the shipment. Did he now? The mouth on that man. I swear his late mother'd be ashamed. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever going to get my service mechanicals at this rate. I could try to find him. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. Right. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Cool. Use holographic describe skies activated. Oh, oh, it's our okay. It just does it automatically. That's an operating room. Quarantine. You're sure this is perfectly safe? I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease myself. Oh my god. For the last rat is on rotten time. Leave me in peace! You whole headed quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? Fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about 
about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. I don't believe that. Should have known she'd send a bruiser after me. Damned if I don't rue the day I saved her scrawny little hide. Inadvertently, I befriended a bloodhound in the process. All right, okay, we can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The trick you, uh, ain't with the board, are you? No. See, I owe them a lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So I hold up here to lay low. Okay, uh, I do work for the board, actually. No. Ellie asked me to help you. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Sure. Uh, what did you do? What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. Okay. Yet you think the board had someone follow you? Think? No. I recognize a contracted killer when I see one, thank you. In my line of work, that's a skill you develop during week one, assuming you want to keep breathing. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. So you stole it? If I had, you think I'd be hiding out in the Med Bay? I was gonna steal it, lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Uh, I do, no. I'll talk to him. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Mm-hmm. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? Mm-hmm. Both, low both. Oh my god. Oh, no, that's, that's the vicar. Oh my god. Um... Oh boy. Quickly, 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 quickly. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. All right. So when we return, we're going to see if we can get our ship unhooked and stop somebody from murdering Jesse and all the goodness. So I thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the Empire, for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will be back in a moment. <laughs>